Okay, so this tutorial brought to you by Sister Jensen for Math 100G um, is to help you get through number 11 on Part B and Part C of um, Section 4.1. The best part is that when you get to number 21 of Part C, that's your portfolio project, and so you'll have some ch you'll have a couple of chances to do it with the numbers we give you, and then when you're doing your portfolio project, is to make a realistic savings of plan for yourself and this is what you'll be doing and submitting. So I just want to make sure if you can get through the exercises you're going to ace that portfolio project. So the first thing I did is I opened up Excel and I just typed in some category headings. Um, it just helps me stay organized and I did start typing the years but then I'm like gosh this is a lot of typing and so if you just highlight both of them we need 20 years and so I just went down to what I thought might be about well I'm pretty good about 20 so you can go ahead and pause it get your category set up so that way you're organized and then we will start inputting some data it's data time alright so we're looking at section 4.1 exercise part B number 11 as a group, use the spreadsheet to make a table of growth of a savings account for 20 years that begins with $200. So if we're beginning with $200, that means you're putting the money in, so we write negative $200. It also then states and receives a $25 deposit each month. So realistically, if this was your realistic situation, could you put in $25 a month? And since you're losing that money now, it's negative $25. The interest rate is, let's see here, and grows at 6% compounded monthly. So 6%, 0.06, number of compoundings per year, it happens 12 times per year. And the table should show the yearly values at the end of each year. Great. All right, so at the amount at the end of the year. So NPR is the number of periods for the year. So if it's one year times the number of compoundings, so in this case we have 12 for the year. The formula. All right, so we've did this before in the last section um, and I think it was section 3.3. We're going to go up to function. We're going to click on future value, the FV, click OK, and now it needs the rate. And our rate is found in, and for me it's D4, so I just click on where my rate is for that first row and now I need to divide it by the number of compoundings per year, which is E4. Now I'm going to go down to my NPER and I'm just going to click on it because we've already calculated it. Click where payment is. How much is your payment? It's a monthly deposit. So 25 bucks a month is going to go in. And our principal value, click on that square as well. This happens to be B4. And then I'm going to click OK. So you should get $520.72 as the answer for what you'd have at the end of one year. Uh, we need to do 20 years. How many of you would like to go ahead and type this 19 more times? Oh, not me. Now, what's going to stay the same is we're going to have all of this stay the same. And so just highlight it. Go to the little box here. When it gets close, it turns into a little cross. Drag it straight down. And then what happens here in NPER is how many periods? Well, in year two, that means we had 12 from year one and 12 from year two, so I'm at 24. And in year three, I had 24 plus 12 is 36. And so then we have 48. And I bet if I highlight this, it'll copy the pattern. Might as well give it a try all the way down to here. Oh, look at that. It counted by 12s for me. I love Excel. Aren't you guys happy we have this here? It's so good. All right, back to the square. Let's see, I'm in G4. This is the formula that calculated how much money we'd have at the end of one year. This is where the formula is at. Because uh, it's a formula, it will use all this data here. All we have to do is copy it down. So I'm just going to drag my little cursor close to it when it turns into a cross and drag it down. And there you go. You might have to make your column a little bit wider if you end up with like hashtag, 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 or pound sign, pound sign, pound sign, depending on your generation. And this is what you would have. So if you could continue putting 25 bucks a month in a savings account that earned 6% interest compounded yearly, or excuse me, monthly, um, at the end of 20 years, you'd have $12,000, um, $12,213.06 in the account. Not bad. Okay, so that takes care of number 11. So make sure that you can do number 11. Now let's do number 12. 
I know this went super fast when we um, watched the video, um, but number 12 says use the spreadsheet to make a graph of the 20 year table. We need to graph this. So basically we want year one the amount, year two the amount, year three the amount. And anytime you're graphing that something that takes place over a period of time, you use a line graph. A uh, bar graph would not be good. A line graph is shows change over time. So we're going to go up to our ribbon up here and click on insert. And we have all of these options. No, we don't want to put any clip art, although it would be cute. We have a column graph, not appropriate for this data. A line graph. A line graph would be appropriate. Okay, oh, might as well. So this one would just have the lines. This one has the lines with dots on it to show where each thing happened. So we could do that. And guess what? My chart is completely blank. Did that happen to you? All right, so let's delete it. Now this time, let's tell it what we're going to graph. So let's click on where year one the amount is and highlight all the way down. And now we're going to go to insert, line, and we're going to use the one with the dots on it. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that nice? We just made a graph. And you can make it bigger off to the side if it's not where you want it. And you can, oh, undo. I think I moved what I didn't want to. Good thing you can undo things you don't like. Now, this looks lovely. However, eh, it's kind of boring. So when I click on the graph, notice I click on the edge. See where it's solid line right now? If I click on the edge, it's got this extra border. These options appear at the top. I can change the color if I wanted to, to red. Um, and what's great is this section. It's called Chart Layouts. And Chart Layouts gives me the options for some additional things like labels. So let's scroll down. Let's see if I can get some with some cool labels. Oh, that one has labels over there. I don't know. You just pick whichever one you think looks the best. Um, I think I want a title with mine. I like this one. We'll go with this one. So now I have all these labels. And this is, you know, optional, but it'd be really cool if you did it for your portfolio project. Chart Title is savings plan for 20 years. And over here, what does this represent? All these numbers. Yeah, number of years. Um, number of years. So when you click on it, it allows you to type. So over here, what are all up? Oh, I gotta get to be able to get my cursor working in there. There we go. This is amount and savings account. Hopefully I spelt it all right. Yeah, move back to where I want you. Oh, come this way. Um, now, if this had like more than one chart, let's say that I wanted to also plot when with a different interest rate and compare them, then this would be useful. But since it's the same line, I don't need it. So I just click on it and then delete. And that's it. And isn't that pretty? So that's how you're going to do 11 and 12 um, for B and C. So I want you to be able to do it on your own though. And then when you get to your portfolio project, you're going to submit something that looks pretty close to this, but it'll have your principal starting amount, realistically what you could put in, and what are the interest rates for your area? I don't know. Make it realistic. You may even want to call the bank and say, hey, what would it be? Um, and then you're going to need to show that you used the future value formula. So if I click on these boxes, I'm going to see that you have used the formula. And I'll also see a lovely graph. So hope that helps. I hope you're having a wonderful time and you're like, oh, this is so great. It's like the last thing we're doing in Excel, right? All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye.